All right, guys, a few things I'm going to be installing. He picked up some ER intercoolers. He even found the shrouds. Valve cover gaskets. The cam seals to an extent. Uh, I will do a bunch of this stuff. I will not do the ones that are in front of the timing belt. Fuel filter. Some stern uh, adjustable front control arms. Then he also got this electric fan kit. So underneath the car, you can see that boots ripped. He also has a coolant leak. I need to figure out where that's coming from. This this wide band shouldn't be just hanging like this, so I'll fix that for him as well. This is no go. But see, if you look, this is super wet. I need to see if it's coming from the transmission or if it's actually working its way down from the motor. Same with this cross member. All this stuff is all greasy and dirty. Belly pan's all dirty and greasy. You guys didn't want me to show you how to take the belly pan off, did you? Sorry. It's off. And I didn't show you. But it's kind of simple, so I hope you guys know how to take the belly pan off. Oil pan. Everything looks pretty dry. There's a few things, you know, it's leaking from, from the drain plug. But that's about it. I don't it's wet up there. Valve cover, possibly. Same with up there, it's wet. It looks like oil, but that's not coming from the turbo. That's, that's working its way down from the valve cover or cam seals. Again, I'm still interested in this. As I don't see it anywhere, it could be working from the but it looks dry. If it was the rear main seal, it would be wet around in this area as well. And it's not. In order to take the front axle out, we need access to the bolt and loosen it before we can take the axle out. So I need to pull this wheel off, take this center cap out, put the wheel back on, and then loosen the, sometimes it's a huge hex, sometimes it'll be a, a big 24 millimeter bolt that needs to come out. And we also have to take the suspension apart up here. As far as I know, these are real BVS wheels. They're not the BB-8s that you see the fakes going around. Regardless, I'm going to be real careful with these wheels just in case they are real. So what we want to go ahead and do is just knock this center cap out. If it's a real BBS center cap, they could be expensive as well. So just be careful. I used the air gun to put it back on. I never advised to do that. Because uh, you don't know what the torque is. I have it set on the lowest setting and I'm not beating it down I'm just putting it on there real quick so I could lower the car and take this bolt out. The socket I'm using is actually a SAE. It's 1 in 1 16th. I'll convert it for you in metric down below. Now that the bolt's loose, I can turn it with my finger, go ahead and lift the car back up and take this wheel off. Before we go any further and take this bolt out, we actually need to take the triple squares out of the inner CV. 
sometimes on if it's been retrofitted already it will have allen bolts and those sometimes could be a real pain in the butt to get out especially if they're seized in there triple squares actually give you more of a grip whereas allens don't if you do have allens in there make sure you use a a good allen socket one that's pretty new don't use one that's kind of worn and and, and uh worn out around the edges a little bit, make sure it has nice sharp edges because stripping those, you could get the bolts out. It's just a real big pain to do. It's happened to me, so I'm just giving you guys a little advice. Don't use worn tools on on those Allen, if, if they're Allen bolts in there instead of the triple square bolts, all right? Another tip to get those triple squares out or, or in some cases the Allen bolts, uh, impact gun works really well. Not having one, it can be done, it would be easier if you had two people. Lug bolts back in here, just a few of them would be fine. Ratchet to get the, the bolts off, you would have a buddy push on the brakes and that'll keep this from moving. And then once that one's loose, you'd go to the next one and just keep going all the way around. But if you're by yourself, it may be difficult to do bolts out by yourself without an impact gun. It's doable, I've done it before. There you have it, it's loose. In previous videos, I've showed you guys how to take this off. Take all this out. It requires some channel locks, 16 millimeter wrenches and a 13 millimeter wrench and a, a mallet. I'm go ahead and take it off again. Show you some of the tricks with using locks to get this bolt out from the upper controls. A lot of people ruin this bolt trying to get it out. If you don't know where stuff goes, mark it, label it, bag it, take pictures of it. That way you know where everything is supposed to go. Unless somebody put it back in the wrong spot, then watch these videos. 10 millimeter. right out and the threads are all good. Next we'll use the mallet. Now it's time for the messy part. To do this job, you're gonna need lots and lots of paper towels. Again, this is an aftermarket axle, and on aftermarket axles, I have a real hard time getting this piece off. Lucky for me, this outer boot's actually good, so I'm not gonna mess with it, but this inner boot is gone. We might have lucked out on this one, on the other axle, I'll see if the outer boot's bad too. That way I could show you guys. I feel bad doing a video on how to, to replace the boots and one of them's still good. If the other one's still good, I'll do another video later on. Again, lots of paper towels. Wearing gloves helps too. This grease will stain your fingers. Some kits come with replacements. My thing on this, if the replacement comes with the Allen bolts, I never reuse them. What I'll do is I'll clean all these threads, get them nice and clean, put some Loctite and stick them back in and reuse them. I know you're not supposed to, they're supposed to be one time use, but I'd rather have the triple square than an Allen to try to get out later on. There's a C-clip in here that needs to come out. Another tidbit, if you guys get this piece off, this outer housing, and you don't remember how it goes back in, See, there's this lip here. This lip always faces the transmission. On the other side of this housing, it's totally flat. Again, if you don't know, take pictures. Always very helpful. That was even better. It popped right off. The C-clamp off. 
this should come right off. You got to be real careful. Try to keep this in one piece. If you move this around a lot, the balls will come out. You can get them back in, uh, but it's a real pain in the butt. Again, for reference, this little lip faces the transmission. There's no lip on this side. Now on the inner CV, another thing too, for reference, this lip's on the inner. There's a lip here for facing outside the car. And then there's no lip here. There's two different sizes. See how there's a big, a small joint and a big joint? So the big joint goes with the small joint. It's always that way, all the way around, if you look at these. Big joint, small joint, small joint, big joint. Most mechanics opt to not do the, bo the boots, or most shops opt to not do the boots. Uh, they just replace the whole axle. It's a lot faster and a lot of frustration free when, when you just replace the whole axle instead of the boot. But if you're a do it yourself or at home and you want to save some money and labor is free, you could just do the boot. They do have some cool tools that actually go in your fingers and they'll open this up and you can just slide it right on. I don't have that. What I normally do is just have some screwdrivers in here and I'll just roll it around until I get past everything and it goes to where I need it to go. So I'll show you how I do it. Just go ahead and keep working it down. Perfect. Now, the inner CV boot does not require uh, a one-time use clamp. Weird, I know, but it's it just under pressure and it works perfect. Never had a problem. Don't forget, add the grease. Again, this little lip goes on the outside. Don't forget we need to reinstall the C-clip. C-clip is in. New boot. Now, you know, we need to line up these holes too. But that's pretty easy to do, we just turn it. If you do want to use reuse these bolts, uh, I use a, it's an M10 by one and a half. And that's uh, the die to, to clean these out. these cork pieces and that you just as long as this is clean you stick this on here and that'll seal up against the other flange they don't have a little grease it's not totally necessary to put this on but if you don't want a little bit of grease seeping through then I'd go ahead and, and put this on but it needs to be a very clean surface otherwise it won't stick and it'll just come apart let's install the axle I worked all through the night. It's daytime again. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't work all through the night. Yeah, no, I did. I worked all through the night. And uh, I got absolutely nothing done. 
I worked very hard. Big oil leak. Figure out where that's coming from. That'll be one of the next steps. One thing I was thinking about when I was working all through the night, these control arms up here, I'm going to, since I have all this torn apart, I'm going to just go ahead and, and put the control arms on here as well. Uh, just to get a bunch of stuff done at once instead of showing you guys how to do the, the axle, take it apart, put it back together, and then take everything apart again just to show you how to do upper control arms. So I'm just going to do it all at once, uh, make things a little easier. It's the same concept, so if you're watching this video, instead of taking the axle out and doing the, those steps, you'll, you'll just undo the arms and stuff like that. In order to take this off, these arms off properly and replace them, I usually like to take this whole shock assembly out. This whole piece comes out, all these, this arms, everything. You could do it this by taking these bolts off, but sometimes it's a pain. So I'd rather just take the whole thing out. You'd be taking this off. There's going to be three bolts, one, two, three, but you get them from the top. And from the top, there's, there's a 16 right here. And to get this out without breaking it, you could take this, this piece off. And then there's two more under here, so let's go ahead and take that off. One right here, and there's one right here. You could also remove this and make it a lot easier to get that, that bolt out. There's usually an 8 millimeter screw in there. Sometimes, if the car's still OEM or people haven't lost the parts over the years, there's a metal clip that's supposed to go right here. I don't know if you could see it, but 99.4% of the time that clip is missing. On my car, it's still there because I made sure of that. But if I have the clips, I will uh, put them on there. But I've done so many of these clips that I've run out of, of these things. Bolt's gone. There are, took all three out. These are 18 millimeter. Nut and bolt. Now, if you look, you see how this, this bolt goes this way and the nut's on this end. If you've never taken the suspension apart, it'll actually be flipped around. The nut will be over here. And a lot of guys change this because this is a, when it's flipped around, it's a real pain in the butt to get this whole, this bolt out. Uh, I don't know if that was done on purpose. I, I kind of think it was. You know, Audi, they're smart guys over there. And if it, you do have it flipped the other way around, you will need to undo the sway bar so you get more movement and you can pull this thing out. And also, if this has never been out, there will be a lock pin. Where is it? Well, somewhere over here, there's a lock. There'll be a lock washer that you'd have to pry out to get the, the unit out. Whole assemblies out. Okay, guys, so see this hole? Up in there. Just making a lot of noise. It correlates to this nub here, and there's a clip that goes in here. If you have a, if you've never taken the suspension off, which I'd guess 99% of the cars, the suspension's been off these already, uh, this will be gone. But, or the nub will be here, but the, the clip will be gone. If you buy these stern upper control arms, just remember they're, they're already preset for factory specs. One arm's going to be longer, the other one's going to be shorter. So take that into consideration or take that into mind when you're putting these together. On here, one arm's going to be longer, one's going to be shorter. Go ahead and take this one piece off. These are 13 millimeter. Now 
Now you're going to take these 16s off. And just remember the orientation they were in. I like to do one at a time. That way I can get these lined up and put it back. First one's on. Both on now. Go ahead and reinstall it. Now since this hasn't turned around on me, I know exactly what direction it goes in. And if you look on here, you can see where the washers have carved into the aluminum. It makes it really easy to put back. I will use the air gun on this, but I'm going to turn the setting way down. And I'll just come back and check it. You could torque this if you want, but on this stuff I normally don't. It's all built, ready to be reinstalled. Now, in the book, if you look, there is actually a specific angle this is supposed to be at. Uh, I just copied what off of these control arms since they're not broken. There could be a harder, a little harder angle. It just depends. It's never flat though. There's always going to be an angle. I like to leave everything loose, all the bolts, until I get everything in here, all the bolts, and then I'll tighten everything up. If you tighten one thing up, then you might have a hard time trying to adjust it and get that in, or get other bolts in. So keep everything kind of loose, and then come back and tighten everything down all at once. If you tighten one thing, you could forget. So I like to, on suspension, when I'm working like this, keep everything loose, and then come back and tighten everything. One thing I'd make sure I replace is the axle bolt. They're one time use. So these, you put a lot of stress and torque on it when you torque it down. So I would replace this. I have some of these. Look, Allen, like OEM. And it's a uh, very big. I'll have to look it up and get you the correct size. It'll be right here. Okay, let's get this on. Another tip if you order the outer cv boot kit it usually comes with one of these not the inner just the outers this is on again it's loose i'm going to go ahead and do the the three 16 millimeter bolts up top this could be a little challenge sometimes but it you could put a a jack here and lift it up and get it in these holes and that'll help
Now these I'm going to go ahead and torque down. Again, you don't have to torque it. I'm just going to torque it for my own. It makes me feel better at night, especially when it's not my car and it's somebody else's car. That way I know everything's tight. And I'll torque it down to 45 newton meters. back in and put back together. Have our 16 millimeter bolt. Now I like to put some anti-seize on here even though we're in Southern California I still put some on there just in case it rusts. Makes it easier to get off in the long run. Anti-seize on there. Go ahead and put this arm on first. The tie rod end. Put a little anti seize on this as well. Now, this goes in a specific way. See, it has the crown, so this, it goes in like this. And it won't always go in. Like now, it won't. The, the tie rod end is getting in the way. On the top, there's an Allen. It's 10 millimeter. Stick it up top. And just keep turning it until the bolt comes through like that. One's in. Don't forget the two 18 millimeter bolts, or one's a nut, one's a bolt. And then go ahead and you gotta tighten it at the nut where the wrench is. So. And what I like to do, this can't be tightened until the car's down and the wheel's on. I leave that on there so I know it's not tight. Passenger side is now done. I did the upper control arms. I fixed the inner CV boot, took the whole axle out and put it back in. Hope that helps you guys out. I learned a new trick on YouTube by watching a few of these other guys. Somehow they like, I don't know, click their heels or snap their fingers or, or just shake their head and... and time moves forward, you know, just instantaneously. So I'm going to, I'm going to try it. Ready? Wow. That really worked. Did it fix everything on the car though? No, it still looks like it has an oil leak and all that crap. So I guess I didn't snap my fingers hard enough or I don't know, wiggle my nose or click my heels, but it did put the wheel on. That, that's pretty awesome. I might try another one later on. Do you think I should try my snapping fingers or clicking my heels or wiggling my nose trick and see if it will take this wheel off and do the control arms and all that for me? Let's try it. Looks the same. Damn. Oh well. Maybe I'll click my heels. Nope. I wonder what that did. Oh. You gotta look at this. You gotta look. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. It worked. Uh. Wait. 
some things are are different. What the heck? What the heck? That ain't good. How long was I out? I'm not gonna try that again. No. Too scary, what would happen next? Snap my fingers and this car turns into something else? Or maybe it'll all be done, that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That is cool. Totally done. Installed. Happy about that. All kidding aside, I did a little bit of work, got these valve covers and stuff off because I'm going to do the cam seals. What's going to happen here is I'm going to replace this cam cap. I'm going to take this. Let's see if you can see that better. I'm going to take this off, replace the cap. I hate when people press these caps in because sometimes they pop right out. I will just take this cap off, the two uh, Torx bits here, take that off, put the cap back on, the correct sealant in the right spots. I will change the gasket under this along with the half moon. I'm not going to do the front because you usually you have to do the time belt and all that. And I've already did this when I did the time belt on this car. This one. Same thing, I already did the front, I'll just do the rear. What's nice about this one is the whole piece comes out. I'll take this cap off. But it, you know, it's it's not hard to do, you just do it right. Instead of trying to force a cap in on the back end here. Just take it off and do it right. I did a bunch of this work beforehand. I'm on a time constraint. I gotta get this car done and out of here today. So I gotta get this done. The ER intercooler's on, which takes a lot of work. He wanted the electric fan. I don't know if I'll get to that today. That, the electric fan might be a different day. Could, it's easy to install the wiring, and having it wired incorrectly takes a while. And I just don't think I have enough time to do that today. So that'll probably be another, another day, another time. All right? Another PSA. Working on this car, trying to get this done. Do it with the right stuff. Somebody, instead of getting new gasket and a new half moon, they just shoved it full of gasket maker. This is what it looks like after I've been cleaning it. Now I gotta take this, you know, just go through it, make sure it's clean, make sure nothing gets in the heads. I mean, it's a mess. Do it right the first time. Don't, don't cheap out. And I've been seeing a lot of this crap lately, more and more. And it just, it really sucks. No wonder this thing was leaking so bad. Do it right the first time. Got it? Got this side all buttoned back up. Next, I will be doing this side. I already pulled this cap off. Cleaned it up a little bit. Be putting everything back. I got most of the car put back together. Valve covers, all this is done. Still gotta put his intake stuff back. Uh, I still need to do the ER intercoolers. Not sure if I'll show you guys how those are installed. I, I might, I, I, I haven't really decided yet. This car, he did the 2.0 coil conversions. I don't agree with that. I think it's a waste of money. The only time it actually saves you money is that if the amplifiers you have to replace them but I rarely have to replace those on a lot of these cars because those could be very expensive but other than that I mean when you put the original ones on they seal around so you don't get any water down into the where the spark plugs are at here there's no seal under here I mean if you get water it'll seep in through here if you get a, a good enough amount of water and just go right into where the spark plugs are at. If you look how the wiring's run, I mean it's right near the exhaust manifold and turbo. On both sides it does that. How long is that going to last? Especially if it's a daily driver. 
But again, I, I don't I don't understand why people do these conversions. Like I guess they have a misfire and they think it's that, so they spend the what six hundred dollars on it and now they feel better because it's or maybe they don't notice a misfire anymore. Maybe they had an an issue somewhere else and they just never resolved it. They kind of just spent the extra money instead of buying a maybe a new coil or something like that. I'm gonna show you guys how to do the ER intercoolers or install them. Now, when you take this hose off, make sure you have a bunch of paper towels and stuff on the ground. Usually, this is full of oil or has a, a decent amount of oil in it. Other side, the passenger side, you're usually okay. There's, There might be some, but very limited. It's usually always the driver's side that has a ton of oil in it. Now I went ahead and already loosened up the this whole front end. If you do it, you could the bolts that held the bumper on. If you put them up in here, they hold it up nicely for you. You don't have to buy the special tool. You remove this inner cord. Out of here. Next thing you'll have to do is drill out the old intercooler brackets. They're right here. So you'll need to drill this out, this, this, and up here you'll need to drill this out as well. If the rivet starts spinning, try to go at a different angle. Hit it from a different angle. pieces on here, a little strap, so we'll go ahead. There you go guys, driver's side brackets off. There's some issues with horns fitting really well. I think on my car, most of them I take off the driver's side horn, it just, you can't get it to fit right with the bumper, it pushes it way too far out. I'm going to go ahead and remove this, and then when you do cut, you cut, we're going to draw it out, you'll cut here, and then down. I'll try to save where this bolt goes, but you, you do remove a lot of this out of the way. And I also drew the line what needs to be removed, this needs to be removed, and then if you look here, you can see where I drew the line. All the way down here. I'll probably cut it down across down here somewhere. The more room, the better. Probably see this little notch here. Just go as much as you can over. There's a metal plate behind this one, so you can only go over so far and just cut it right along the metal plate and straight down. Or you could come at an angle a little bit if you want. I'll probably come here's that metal plate. I'll probably come down here and then straight cut right there. Make sure you have eye protection and ear protection. Bend all this out of the way, but I'm going to go ahead and cut it. This really isn't the right tool for this. I'll get the other tool out.
see how well it fits. I'm happy with that. Nice spacing. Looks good. You can see it makes a big mess. So let me clean that up and then uh, we'll get this all. We won't bolt it all the way. I still got to do the other side, but I'll get the hoses on. This intercooler is on. You can see I have spacing between here. Got spacing between here. Won't rub up against it. Now it's not totally bolted down, but it's it's in the same where the area it's supposed to go. Upper hose is on. Lower hose is on. I just have to install the shroud now, but I won't do that until after I get the front end back together. Passenger side's a little harder to do. We could keep the horn. Uh, we might have to bend the bracket a little bit to move it out, but we should be able to keep it. Take this off. Now, we have the AC condenser back here. Like this. There's a bracket that came with ER that you could actually move it back. I don't see that bracket. It's this line right down here, same problem, it's too short. It connects up here. It connects right there. That'll have to be undone because that'll give us more room for this to move underneath the new intercooler. Another issue with having the bigger intercoolers is this bumper doesn't fit right. You'll have a gap, sometimes it looks funny. It's really difficult to make it fit because there's just so much crammed in this side. This bracket system here, this whole bracket system has to be removed. And then this gets modified, this bracket. So all this could be pushed back. If you look back here, there's space. This whole unit needs to be pushed back. Otherwise the ER intercooler won't fit. And another thing I usually, I always have to do is all this right here, I gotta cut it or the inner core won't fit. From this piece here all the way up, I have to cut this all down to where that metal is. Stay away from this wire. That's for your AC, it goes on the back side too, so try not to cut that on accident. And then I'll just have to come down. I'll come down and cut it like somewhere over here. Go ahead and loosen this 13 millimeter down here. Uh, that'll just give us some more wiggle room. Kind of a pain in the butt, but it came out. Let's see what brackets I have. See if I have something that I can make work. It's missing that bracket. I mean that bolt, but right there. There's a thread. So you don't have to make any holes. I can bolt this in and bend it to my needs to fit this and then I'll just run a bolt through one of these. Bam, good to go. I went ahead and made a bracket, bent it. It'll fit in that threaded, go right across and fit this far one right here. I'll just put a bolt through it 
and man, we're good to go. Should be good to go now. Now I'm probably gonna put a new bolt in there. That's because he lost that. And I kept this piece so we could actually put a bracket on here and hold this down a little farther if we want. See, I could pull it down and tie it off. And give us a little more room. There, that gives us a little more room for those inner cores or inner cooler. Next, I'm gonna cut this out of the way. Give me more clearance for the this metal that I gotta cut. Again, guys, I made the mark. Comes down here, crosses there. I'm gonna follow this plate. I'm gonna try to leave some room here so this wire could be connected like it's supposed to. And then I'll come and follow that plate on the back that goes this way and then turns and I'll follow that and cut it off down here. Eyes and ears. Not that straight, but it's better than... You won't see it. I think I have to get rid of this too. All right, the next thing is this metal right here. I got it, this has to go. like trimmed up. Have some foam here. All right, let's see how well it fits. It's in there. Very, very tight though. our intercoolers are in. You can see on this side I didn't have to make any cuts. Everything fit. Nice. Well, I mean I had to cut this out. That's for sure. And then I put foam here and then back underneath here there's foam on here because it's a very very tight fit. Clamps are on. This side's on as well. Space. Remove the horn. There's you could try fitting in here, but that's a tough, tough fit. Next thing I need to do is install the shrouds. Looking at these shrouds, it looks like somebody already cut it. They didn't do a very good job. They kind of hacked it. Usually you just 
true like, cut a hole in the center where this this piece goes. but it sucks they hack this whole piece out. It is what it is. Shrouds are on. I was looking at these. They're not ER intercooler shrouds. They're some aftermarket generic type. They act. They could be AWEs, and maybe that's why they cut this out. Usually AWE has some form of identification here, but I don't see them. So that's why I, I think they're generics. But they're installed. Time to put the bumper back on. Front bumper's on, headlights are on. Got the rest of the top put together, top side's all done. So this car's ready to go back to the client. The only thing I did not get installed was the electric fan. Uh, and I think that's it. It was a little bit of a time constraint, but it's, it's pretty much done. Until next time, wrench away, guys.